Welcome into this week's edition of Game Day TV. Jerry, I'm Jerry, Jerry. Jerry. Whoa. Uh-oh. Some stuff I saw this weekend really reminds me of the old urban renewal programs. Yeah. What I'm going to call is football renewal. Okay. We're going to start with what we know is demolition. I'm going to put my hat on here in just a minute. But as we go, the criteria will be d- discussed right here on Game Day. And by the way, welcome to Game Day TV. Hey, well, I, 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 I don't even know what to say, Max. You got a hard hat sitting on the table? Listen, I'm telling you, I, I saw some trash this weekend. Okay. I'll be honest with you. All right. Well, hey, welcome into Game Day TV. Here's what we're going to discuss today. We're going to talk about, we're going to review the top games. And obviously, Max is fired up, ready to review the top games. We've got highs and lows. Wow. We're going to we're gonna have to skip fan blitz this week because we've got to make room for a little extra conversation that Max got built up. Also, we're going to uh, break down the upcoming games in the SEC this week and Max, that's another uh, part of your uh, little uh, demolition there, how we're going to do that. Hey, I'll have the high school report as well as the recruiting report. We'll do the top ten around the state of Alabama in high school, and there were some huge games with huge implications this week. I was able to attend a couple of high school games, so we, we got in and we heard from a head coach this week while I was on the sideline of another game that they couldn't play, so uh, we'll talk about that as well. Uh, big games this coming Friday. Kim Shera, guess what? She's going to have game day weather. She may need the hard hat after you get through. Well, I'm telling you, that look, we've got, we got the script already worked out. Yeah. And some of the people out there I know is going to agree, some won't agree. But the, most of the comments I've read on Facebook about the teams that we're going to talk about, I think they're all in my corner. Well, you, we almost want to jump right now and start, don't you? <laughs> huh? I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> hey, we'll carry on uh, the rest of the show with uh, big game reminders about games coming up this week. And, Max, just like you're talking about about what happened last week, what's coming up is going to be huge. I'm telling you, what happened this past weekend is going to have a definite effect on what happens this coming week. There's some teams out there that we had ranked at the bottom. All of a sudden, they've jumped to the top because of performance. Others uh, kind of have fallen from grace, to say the least. So I'm excited about what's coming up, and uh, certainly that's what makes this show so great. Well, and also, too, uh, some of the teams played – not up to par even though they won we're going to break that down and then some teams that you really expected to win you're going to have to put that big old foot back in that mouth one more time this week aren't you? I know I'm going to do that but before I do that we're we're going to use the demolition theory first and go from there. (laughs) All right, folks so we'll talk about big games in the SEC and a few games around the country as well that were pretty huge then Max is all famous what's for supper will end up our show so thanks for joining us stay tuned We'll be back with more right here on Game Day TV. You can travel all over and you won't find Another town with our name or our frame of mind So much to do, so much to see The one and only. Thank you. I never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her. And she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. When you're in business, you need to stay as visible as possible. Turn your car or truck into a moving billboard to reach new customers all day, every day. With high-impact, full-color graphic vehicle wraps from Sundown Tent and Design. From design to expert installation, Sundown Tent and Design is a vital tool in your marketing arsenal to keep your business in the public eye. Visit them today at sundownwraps.com or call 205-337-3691. How do you show love? 
with the big things, the little things, the tough things, your everything. Show them you care. Alpha Insurance. Sportsmanship is the educational component um, derived from athletic contests. In sportsmanship enhances the character of student athletes because of the impact of the leaders of each sports team. Those leaders help develop the character of those student athletes to be displayed in times of adversity. Welcome back into Game Day TV, everyone. Before we go into the segment, let Max start getting the hammer out. Let me tell you about uh, a sponsor of ours, been with us all season and will continue to be with us, and that's Central State Bank. Central State Bank has checking, loans, or mortgages. Uh, they got everything covered with a full variety of personal and business accounts and services to meet all of your banking needs. You can access them online and by mobile banking. You can make a deposit on your phone using Apple Pay, or you can go and streamline your bills with Bill Pay. Hey, you need help, don't like the computer, no problem. Walk into any of the convenient branches. They have personal bankers and loan officers standing by to serve you every step of the way. That's Central State Bank. Uh, 100 years of loyalty and integrity right here in Central Alabama. Well, Max, everybody's been waiting. Where, where you want to start? We'll just uh, big game review. Yeah, let's do that. Let's talk about some of the teams that we've watched at all around the country. Basically, I think we had great disappointment. Expectations have been built so high. For example, with LSU and Mississippi State, right. with Tennessee and Florida, primetime games in the country. And they got exposed. I'll be honest with you. The, the the philosophy of the game itself didn't hold true. We talked a great deal. In fact, I made the, the comment uh, that the people at LSU must have hired some of the spin doctors that we'd seen before because they spun that team up as a nationally ranked football team. Well, guys, what I saw this past weekend, they couldn't beat some of the high school teams I've coached. All right, what I noticed with the LSU, and maybe you can start there, is a lack of discipline on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. They gave up huge personal foul penalties when it cost them. Yeah, LSU has had 30 penalties in three games. They had nine for 112 yards this past week, Jerry. And that's inexcusable. I mean, you, you don't do that. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a philosophy that you don't handle at practice. And that's what happens. Teams that are well-disciplined play on Saturdays like they practice during the week. Right. And that's exactly what's happened. Just, they couldn't get it together. Lack of a strong running game. Etlin did not pass very well. Geis was one of the top running backs. He got 79 yards. Now, I'm going to talk about Mississippi State in a minute. There was a reason for some of that. Right. But I think in all fairness, basically LSU comes into that ball game. They had won 20 out of 21 times against Mississippi State. Had not lost in eight trips to Starkville. So, I, you know, I, I go back and look and say, and I, I've got some good friends on that staff, and you know when I talk to them oh, pretty regularly. Absolutely. And I, I pretty well had a feel for where they were going. And, and I picked LSU to win that ball game based on tradition, right. level of, of competition, recruiting, the whole ball and, of wax. And talking to him right before the game. Absolutely. He took my call on Friday in a staff meeting right. uh, to talk a little bit about their program. But here's the difference. When they show up and showed up in Starkville, they weren't ready. They weren't ready to play. Uh, what does that start? At the top. And Ed Ogeron, bless his heart, he's had a, a very checkered career, to say the least. The last time he was in Starkville was when he got fired by, Miss, by Ole Miss after they lost to Mississippi State. So that right. ought have been an omen right there to him. But uh, it didn't work out that way. The fact is they didn't play well. They've got a lot of rehab work to do. Uh, I'd like to think that that program is strong enough that they can get that done. Jerry, let's go to Mississippi State now. Okay. Take, don't take anything away from them. They played in Starkville, a hard place to get to, first of all, and even harder to recruit to. I, I think Dan Mullen probably does as good a job, or maybe better, than most any coach in the Southeastern Conference because of the level of talent that they have to recruit. For example, Nick Fitzgerald, the outstanding quarterback. 
He was number two in the conference last year, led, led the conference in dual in rushing and throwing the ball, but was behind Jalen Hurts in voting. He's back. He's a sophomore this year. Here's a guy that's six foot five, 250 pounds, can read defenses. Oddly enough, he comes out of a 3A high school in Georgia where he didn't play quarterback. He was more of a tight end wide receiver. He was on the roster as a quarterback, but played very little. All the camps he attended, the way Mississippi State got him, they had him to the camp as a wide receiver. And, and what, something happened to one of the quarterbacks, and they allowed him to throw the ball. Nick, uh, excuse me, Nick Fitzgerald is a player. But Dan Mullen saw this, and he said, hey, wait a minute. This kid might be the guy, the answer to, to Dak Prescott, and he is. And so I, I think he not only called it a magnificent football game offensively, they, LSU had no concept of where the defensive players were coming from. And consequently, they got to Etlin and the guys all night. A couple of times they ran that jump pass that, yeah. that <laughs> Mullen's made famous with Tebow at Florida. Yes, he did. Okay. It worked to perfection both times. Yeah. Why in every school in the SEC inserting that play? Well, because most of them don't have a tight end. I mean, they've <laughs> gone to a spread formation. They, they did away with the tight end. They put her back in there. Right. But I, Dan Mullen has a great combination and a, and a philosophy about the old and the new, and he's done a very good job. If you notice, short yardage situations, Fitzgerald is under the center. The rest of the time, he's in the gun. So that means he's very flexible. He'll have two backs. Sometimes he'll have one back there. Sometimes he'll spread five wide receivers. That keeps the defense off balance. We heard all the accolades about LSU's defense uh, with Arenda and all the things that they have. My good friend Pete Jenkins coaches the defensive front. All of that stuff. Guys, it didn't matter. I mean, <laughs> Fitzgerald scored four times. Two running, two passing. How much balance do you need? And they knew what was coming, and they couldn't stop him. All right, let's move on to Alabama and, and Colorado State. Uh, good ball game for Alabama. Very good. Alabama, Alabama kind of sluggish a little bit, to, you know, getting started. Uh, but you got to look at Here's the thing that, that really that Nick Saban does is almost is, – it's very unique with a lot of coaches is that he can change philosophies. You know, two years ago he was – adamantly against a running quarterback in the fast-paced offense. What are they doing now? They went and signed Jalen Hurts out of Texas who can run and throw. He ran for 110 yards running the football and 250-plus throwing it. So he's a, you know, he's a dual-threat quarterback to say the least. Nick Saban and his staff have implemented that into their offense. The other side of that, I thought Mike Bobo did a great job in preparation with Colorado State. I said here on the show last week, to me, Mike Bobo came, played in the SEC, played at Georgia, coached at Georgia, and I think that was an audition for him for another job down the road. And I think that he didn't, he didn't disappoint the people, the critics out there, that were evaluating him as a potential candidate. Especially since Nick Saban did not call Bobo exactly and right. give him the No, he the did not. I love that. That I love clip that this interview. week was great, it wasn't was. it? He said, yeah, why don't one of you guys just call him and ask him what I'm going to do. Right, right. But, I, you know, that's, that's Nick Saban. And when you win and you can afford to be as sarcastic as you like. You that's know, right. Particularly when it's uh, applicable to what you're talking about. But anyway, I thought Alabama, you know, same old, same old. They're still number one right. in the country. And uh, I think what they've done, they've set the stage to go to Nashville this week. And, and let me tell you, you know, Derek Mason has done a remarkable job. You know, he followed James Franklin. And right. We all know that story. But his players are giving bulletin board material for Alabama every time they open the mouth. And I can promise you, Alabama's going to Nashville this week. And, you know, all I can say is God bless Vanderbilt. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, all right. Auburn beat Mercer, which everybody expected. They turned the ball over five times. They should have, in all actuality, should have scored at least 28 more points than they did. So the score, not necessarily the uh, – the, Let me find. Uh, yeah, I got them <laughs> on my demolition. <laughs> you knew I did. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm glad to put my hat on when we talk about that one. But uh, you know, in all fairness, Auburn, I, we don't know. It just they set the, they set it up. Mercer came in there, and I read one quote this week. And really, I know for you Auburn fans, it's not really this funny, but it really is under the circumstance that Mercer really didn't realize Auburn was as good as they are. So, so they, they, played, they played up to, I think, up to their potential most of the game. But listen, Petway had to score with four minutes to go to put that game away. And Petway was in the ball game the whole time. Oh, never played number two and number two. I know Johnson's been hurt. We right. all understand. Where was number three, the Martin kid? Yeah. 
Yeah. I'd have played him every snap, but I see now why they didn't. Right. Something that practice showed them that they go ahead to. And Petway still got some foot problems. I don't think if yeah. you watched him, he was kind of uh, gingerly walking around. But anyway, Auburn comes away with a win. Good thing. Let me just tell you, Auburn goes to Missouri this week. Yeah. Guys, I'm going to tell you now, Missouri's a, a wounded animal up there. They is in desperate need of a win as Auburn is. So that's going to be a. I think that's going to be a slobber knocker to uh, say the least. Well, I know you think that, but. I can't help but to think after seeing how, what they got beat like forty something to nothing. Or yeah, something. they did. So, you know, yeah. it's uh, Purdue. Purdue crows in there when it one of those big ten powerhouses. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. <laughs> but see, <laughs> Bear Oben's got some problems at, at Missouri. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But listen, Drew Locke can throw the football now. Uh, the quarterback up there is, is pretty good. Auburn's defense is better than average, I think. Uh, where I'm concerned for Auburn though is the offensive situation. So. Uh, down to one quarterback, it, it appears, with one that's going to probably be dismissed after we saw all the publicity over the weekend. But uh, they've got some they've got some work to do. All right, let's move on to Florida and Tennessee. Oh, Let uh, me see. I believe I've got both of them on my list. Even though one of <laughs> what I saw this week. You gonna demo both of them? I, both of them. I'm telling you. If you are an Auburn, if you are a Tennessee, a Florida fan, if you were happy. With anything you saw, yeah, uh, I'm going to question, you know, did you really watch the game I watched? You know, and I heard all the interviews, and I, and I know how uh, I've, coached that, I've coached the secondary at that level, and I know that the last play of the ball game uh, that, that Coach Jones and his defensive staff had warned the kids, don't ever let on a, on a final play, like don't ever let anybody get behind you. But you know what the uh, other side of that is? And I, I guess I recognize of all the tapes they had broken down, they had never seen Franks, uh, Philip Franks, the quarterback at Florida, throw a ball over 30 yards. Right. He threw that one 63 yards in the air on to the in, on the run target, and he was on the run. Yeah. And besides that, so I understand how the defensive back could probably gotten a little lack, cost him the ball game. So what did that do for Florida? What did that do for Tennessee? If you watch Jim McElwain mm -hmm. after the game, he was so flabbergasted, he didn't know what to say. That's right. He, really, he kept saying, all these fans, <laughs> all this is great. Well, he, he was happy for that because if they'd have lost that game, they'd have probably been down there with his head. <laughs> right. But the fact is, is it was not a very entertaining ball game. Too many mistakes. Uh, Florida is sitting in a situation where their talent level is not what it should be, in my opinion, in the state of Florida. Uh, I, I, don't, I can't put my finger on that. Their offense, their offense is – governed by the best defense that they can play. And that's what scores, and that's what puts them in position to score. So I don't know. Here's, here's the deal. Florida's got to go to Kentucky this week, to Lexington. Lexington, Coach Stoops has done a really good job up there. They've recruited well. They put together a good, solid program. They go into Columbia, South Carolina, win that ball game 23-13 this week. I had no idea they did. I picked South Carolina all the way. But they did it. Right. And, you know, you and I have been talking about Kentucky since the first show with Lynn Scarborough. Yes. Uh, we even discussed they're going to be a lot stronger. A lot of people didn't believe that. but How about, Jerry, right. if when you sit back and look at the conference right now, you got a miss in the West, you got a Mississippi State that nobody gave credit to. They're right. sitting at that number two right now. That's right. Then you look at Vanderbilt and Kentucky on the East, they're right at the top with Georgia. Florida and Tennessee, no. You know, So I don't know. In Missouri, we don't know yet, I mean, really. So the whole conference is kind of topsy-turvy right now. And all the, the con t talk that we've done about – you know, the football renewal program and all that. That's that's as we see it today. We're going to give them credit for improvement down the road. But the criteria that we're going to set with these teams, and we're going to evaluate them every week, and we're going to put them on a, on a score, on a scorecard. Zero to ten. At the end of the season, the last if you've got four or less points for the year, then uh, I'm going to put my hard hat on and show up with a stick of dynamite. Because gotcha. they need to clean that place out and start over. And sometimes it not just need to be the, the athletic department. It might need to go all the way to the top. So uh, we'll be talking about that as the year right. goes on. Touch on Vanderbilt for just a minute. They Ooh. they showed up, played good against Kansas State. They really did. I, you know, I think you you go ahead and give Vanderbilt. We knew was going to be good defensively, and uh, and that's where they're hanging their hat right now. Derek Mason comes there from Stanford as a defensive coordinator. Comes to Vanderbilt, replaces James Franklin, who had done a remarkable job, uh, I think, building that program. But they recruited well. Do you remember Vanderbilt works on a different set of regulations from within the university. They don't have an athletic director. Their right. budget comes off the, the line item off the general budget. They, they answer basically to a vice president uh, there as opposed to an athletic director. 
But everybody knows their role there. The, the type of kids that they have to recruit because of the academic standard is a little bit different. And certainly they've done a good job in amassing enough players to compete in the Southeastern Conference. We don't have time to get to highs and lows. We'll do that. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll continue this conversation with Coach Max Howell right here on Game Day TV. When you're in business, you need to stay as visible as possible. Turn your car or truck into a moving billboard to reach new customers all day, every day. With high-impact, full-color graphic vehicle wraps from Sundown Tent and Design. From design to expert installation, Sundown Tent and Design is a vital tool in your marketing arsenal to keep your business in the public eye. Visit them today at sundownwraps.com or call 205-337-3691. home. It's where you take your time. Build the future. Make your memories. Celebrate. Come home. Alpha Insurance. Participation in all extracurricular activities helps the development of the student athlete. While academics always come first, we consider extracurricular activities the co-curricular activity that can help develop the student athlete in their daily lives. You can travel The one and only. never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her and she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. All right, Max, straight into highs and lows. You want to talk about the highs first? Let's yeah, do let's Mississippi do that. State just real quick. Mississippi State obviously on a big high this they week. They really are. That Dan Mullen's done a remarkable job, and and I, I can't say enough for where for what he's done with that particular program. Having coached at Ole Miss and against uh, that program, not, I coached against Jackie Sherrill when he was there. Uh, Jackie had had him to a certain level, but Dan Mullen's has surpassed that. Uh, done a, a really good job, and I make you know I make comments from time to time. If you've never been to Startville, that's a hard place to get to first, and it's an impossible place to recruit to. Dan Mullins has done this, Jerry. He's gone into Louisiana. He's gone into Georgia. He's gone into Florida. Picked up kids that were normally on a rating scale of a three star as opposed to Alabama's getting fours and fives and most and some of the other schools are. But he lives off of the three star guys and coaches them up. Dak Prescott, the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys last year, is a rookie and he's back this year. Right. Was a three star guy out of Louisiana that LSU didn't even recruit. So that just tells me Dan's got a great eye. He has a, he's got a great track record in coaching quarterbacks, by the way. He has a great eye for talent, and he gets results from those. You put all that together, to me, the biggest improvement they have, not only Nick Fitzgerald this past year, but, but a hiring of Todd Grantham from basically from Louisville. But he's been at Georgia. 
Uh, now, Mississippi State, by the way, let's see, where do they go this weekend? To Georgia. That's right. Uh, so I believe, uh, you know, that'll be a very interesting. I will say this to you for you Georgia fans. Georgia better play better than they play. They better play better than they did against Notre Dame if they go to beat Mississippi State this week. All right, Alabama on our highs list. Of course, by Vandy doing so well, which is also on our highs list. Yes. It makes kind of an interesting oh, game, and ticket is. prices have gone up all of a sudden, right? To, you know, and I, that's the only thing I, for the fan. <laughs> it's a smaller stadium. I think 40,000, 45,000 uh, is what they'll seat. So what did Vanderbilt do? Look, you can't. You, you can criticize Vanderbilt for a lot of things, but not being smart is one of them. That's right. You know what the, you know what the people at Tennessee say. Uh, you know what they call the folks at Vanderbilt? Right. Boss. So <laughs> that's normally what the way because, because that's oh, where they are. Max. You may need that hard hat for a different reason. There's some the folks fact, up in Tennessee watching this but show. The, <laughs> but the fact is, is the Vanderbilt, <laughs> the Vanderbilt program is sitting really probably right – James Franklin had it nine, nine wins two years in a row. And I think Derek Mason is back there. He's recruited well. They don't get the publicity, Jerry, in the, because of the numbers. Uh, Vanderbilt's a small school. Uh, has a, you know, they got a, a great academic environment. We all know that. And people say from time, well, why don't they get out of the SEC? They need them in the SEC to keep the GPA up. Uh, <laughs> yes, they've, they've done a remarkable job. Now, Alabama going there, I think Alabama's heard all they want to hear about Vanderbilt and how right. much better their program. I, I pulled up on Facebook an interview with a couple of players at Vanderbilt after they beat Kansas State this weekend. All oh, they said, we're waiting on Alabama, we're waiting on Alabama. Well, guys, I got news for you. Alabama, uh, Alabama's going to show up 2:30 Saturday afternoon. CBS <laughs> national prominence, and that'll be a huge ball game. It will. Okay, go to the lows now. We're covering most of the highs. Oh. We know we got LSU, but and we talked about that some. But LSU's on a low right now, and yes. and I think a lot of people kind of have empathy in a weird way for Ogeron. Yeah. It's like Alabama and Auburn fans would like to see him succeed. They just want to beat. LSU by one point exactly to right. keep Ozer because he's a, such a natural fit there with his voice and all that yeah. and you yeah. can't understand what he's saying I can't well, but I don't think the kids did but either. they're on a low right now and sometimes I don't think the coaches did That's understand right. the way they coached the other That's night right. but you know I you know I'd like to see them do well but they I think the excitement of the change. Les Miles had got the program in somewhat of a rut, and everybody that's ever watched me through the years know I, you know, I was not a Cam Cameron uh, fan, and that was his offensive coordinator, and I told him all the statistics on why I didn't believe that, but that's neither here nor there. This is a new era. A new offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, coming in from Pittsburgh, got the offense moving around. Here's the thing. They, they move around and fool a lot of folks. I think they fool themselves. They didn't fool Mississippi State. Right. <laughs> Mississippi State line, they'd be shifting people all over. Mississippi State just stays still. What'd they do? They attacked. And of course, they won the football game. At so the Alabama, line of scrimmage. At the too. line of scrimmage. On both sides. That's right. Both sides of the line, they did. So, I, you know, give that. We hope they improve. They're definitely on our list right now to watch as the season un unfolds. So, uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll get a chance to, to watch them as, as they go. I have, as I know, most people know, I have a really good friend on that staff. Uh, and he, he kind of warned me Friday, Louis. He said, We're concerned about this ball game. But the fact is, uh, he thought they could win, and I think you got to go into it thinking you can win. I don't think he thought – he did tell me they will play at least 20 freshmen in that ball game. If they're young, they're building for the future. But, guys, the way they got beat, that, that, that's not a – that's a detriment. That's nothing positive that came out of that ball game. <clears throat> Sunday morning when they got back to Baton Rouge, they started football one-on-one. Coach Ogeron stands up, guys, this is the football. This is what this game's all about, and they have to start from there. Well, I said this, uh, you and I did an Iron Bowl pre-show a few years ago, and I said, you asked me what Auburn had to do. I said, first of all, they got to get a first down. Yep. And that's how LSU's Absolutely. got to think right now. they got to start over. they got to work and get the first down, and they then do. go from there. They really do. And I, and I think that I know a lot of those guys in the program down there, Jerry, they're capable of doing that. I think they're going to have to have a, a reassessment of the talent level and who sits on the bench and who starts. Uh, maybe some of those young guys, particularly those redshirt freshmen, uh, they may consider moving those guys in to maybe motivate those older guys to do a little bit better job. All right, two, two teams on our Lowe's list play each other this week. That's Auburn and Missouri. Whew. Uh, I don't know how. That, the only I don't know other, what only to do worse about worse ball worse, only worse ball game than that's going to be uh, Texas A and M in Arkansas. Now between those two, you know I may go to the beach. I don't know. <laughs> I, you know I spent from eleven o'clock Saturday morning to two a.m. Sunday morning in my chair with my notepad making notes on all the games I watched. This week 
Uh, not so much. I, can, I believe I can flip it on. I can tell you in the first quarter on either one of those games how it's going to come out. But Auburn, Auburn certainly got the material. Way more talent than Missouri's got. Right. I think oh, as bad as Auburn has played, I'll say this, I think they're better coached, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. So, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm torn. Auburn needs to win that game, but we don't know, Jerry, what's going on internally. We don't know what's going on with the coaching staff and the, and the coaching relationship and with the players. And we keep getting questions on our Facebook page, which, by the way, is Ask Game Day TV on Facebook. Yeah. You can leave us a question. Anyway. But one of the big questions is, it goes back to Chip Lindsey and Gus Malzahn. Sure. What does. is the relationship and what is Gus letting Chip do? That is a great question, Jerry, because they someone came to the agreement that Chip need to be in the press box, and I probably agree with that. I really do. My, here's my question, though. Who is Chip talking to on the sideline? If he's if he's using Gus's playbook to design with his tweaks to the play that needs to be called, who's he talking to? Is he talking to Gus, or is he talking to Coach Han, the offensive line coach? One of them or both of them? Well, guess what? Guess who gets to make that final decision, you know, if that's not exactly what the head guy wants? So I, I think there's still some uncertainty about the play calling on who's doing it, who's handling it. Certainly there's uncertainty about the results of what's happening. Turn the ball over five times, you know, they fumble five, lose four of them, and throw a pick on top of that. And most of them was in the red zone. So, you know, you can't, I don't care who you're playing. You can't do that. Well, Auburn needs to come out, put one, two, three touchdowns on the board, first three possessions. Exactly right. Make a statement, see if they can keep Missouri yep. down where Auburn thinks they belong. But that remains to be seen if they can hold on to the football long enough to get it across the goal line. Well, it is. And, look, it, no doubt about Petway. And, of course, Johnson's got to pull him. And we all know about that. Whether Martin Kidd is, I don't know. You know, uh, Coach Malzahn said he was too little to play against Clemson. Mm -hmm. Why'd you recruit him in if you, if you right. put him out there wide receiver somewhere? I don't know. But there's, a, there's several reasons that you've got to have. If you've got an injured number one with a foot problem and you've got to pull hamstring on number two, uh, you better go to no backs and put in another wide receiver and throw the ball every snap. Uh, I, I think they've got some adjustments they've got to make. Uh, I would say this. I agree with you 100%. Quick score up front to start with. Win the battle on the line of scrimmage with the offense right off the bat. Put points on the board and then make Missouri play catch up. That's what they do not do very well. I think Auburn needs to win the toss, take the ball, dot and fur, and carry it down the field. I agree. In I agree Let's move on. We touched on Mississippi State and Georgia. Yeah. Obviously, Mississippi State's on a high. Yeah. Georgia still a question mark in your mind, in my mind too. So this is going to be a game that they're going to we're going to find out. I think for what both, they, what both teams have got. Both teams. That's what I was going to say, Jerry. I think both teams now. Uh, we'll get a good read on Sunday night, uh, of Saturday night, and we'll talk about it Monday and Tuesday, certainly, on how we put this thing together as far as moving forward. Because, as I said, we've already seen topsy-turvy on both sides, east and west, about teams that emerge. And, and I don't think this I – think, I think the picture will be cl much clearer this weekend just because of the two games, uh, the, the Florida going to Kentucky and, of right. course, Mississippi State going to Georgia. I think all that on the east uh, we'll know this time next week. How, how it looks. Texas A&M oh, travels boy. out to Arkansas. Bielema, you got some inside information. I don't know. Uh, you, you're worried about Bielema <laughs> staying there. Well, it is. And, and I think it's not coming from me. It's from, from contacts I've got in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And basically some of the things that's happened with this program. And, and I think it goes beyond. I mean, this is the, one of the few times that the athletic director now uh, his job in jeopardy is going to become in jeopardy because of the performance of the athletic department. And I think at some point in time, and again, I came through that. I was working on an advanced degree at Florida State trying to, to get to that next level to be an athletic director. And it didn't take me about 90 days in the in an interim to working in a, in a Division One athletic program in the SEC to realize I didn't want that job. I'll be honest, I had enough problems just my, kind of keep myself straight, much less dealing with problem after problem. Some guys can handle that, some cannot. So I, I think the Arkansas situation is going to probably change. If it doesn't change on the field between now and the end of the season, the administration will see that it does change. Finances there had been in jeopardy, but I was told this past week that those have been eliminated. There have been a couple of guys step up and put 10, 15 million bucks in the, in the, in the athletic department, and they can make changes if they so choose to do so. So not advocating anything. Performance on the field dictates that, guys. Uh, and sometimes it's not all wins. It's how you perform. You know, go out there and let Arkansas win by three touchdowns, and that'll kind of die down. And right. now, now the, the heat shifts to Kevin Sumlin at Texas A&M. Right. But, Jared, that's another program, much like the Florida program. How can you sit in a, in a 
head coach's office in a, in a Division One school in Florida or Texas and not have top athletes in the country come to your program. I don't understand it. Before we go to break, Auburn loses to Missouri. Malzahn on the hot seat immediately. No doubt about it. I think he already is underlying, even though he won. I think the performance itself, that's some of our criteria as we go down the road. Not so much, well, I, I can't say that. Yeah, it is all about wins and losses, but performance has a great deal to do with how you get there, win or lose. So you would put the hard hat on for sure next week if I'm bringing if it back with me. Lays an egg in Missouri. Absolutely, I'm bringing right. it with me. All right, we'll talk some high school when we come back here. It's, uh, Max got a lot of information about college, very entertaining. All right, we'll talk high school when we come back right here on Gate Day. The unexpected. The inevitable. The inconvenient. Life can be difficult. Make it a little easier. Alpha Insurance. Sportsmanship is the educational component um, derived from athletic contests. And sportsmanship enhances the character of student athletes because of the impact of the leaders of each sports team those leaders help develop the character of those student athletes to be displayed in times of adversity. You can travel all over and you won't find another town with our name or our frame of mind. So much to do, so much to see. The one and only. When you're in business, you need to stay as visible as possible. Turn your car or truck into a moving billboard to reach new customers all day, every day. With high-impact, full-color graphic vehicle wraps from Sundown Tent and Design. From design to expert installation, Sundown Tent and Design is a vital tool in your marketing arsenal to keep your business in the public eye. Visit them today at sundownwraps.com or call 205-337-3691. Never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her. And she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. We're very thankful for our sponsors here on Game Day TV, and one of them. Uh, is Central State Bank right here in Central Alabama. Central State Bank, whether you need checking, loans, mortgages, they've all they got you covered with a full variety of personal and business accounts and services to meet all of your banking needs. Access them online uh, and also with mobile banking and you can make a deposit using your phone if you use Apple Pay or you can go and streamline your bills with Bill Pay. You don't like to be on the computer, no problem. They got you covered with personal bankers. Just walk in to one of their many convenient locations and you can see a loan officer or get personalized service there as well. 100 years of family, 100 years of integrity. That's Central State Bank here in Central Alabama. Well, Max, time to move on to a little bit of high school and it's been a, a great uh, season so far of high school. We had some big games this past week. We'll uh, start with 5A and see how 5A in the top 10 fared. Uh, as we go to number 10, Central of Clay County, 
They beat Eufaula 28-23. They play at Claiborne County next week. Number nine, uh, Pleasant Grove. They uh, lost to St. Clair County 29-18. May Jemison in Huntsville, they beat uh, St. John Paul II, 49 to 7, so they're rolling there. Greenville uh, lost to Charles Henderson out of Troy. Charles Henderson, a good football team, 27 24, so Henderson puts Greenville down a notch. We'll see how that affects them. Beauregard uh, beat Sylacauga, 61 35. Uh, a big game. With number five, Winona played Briarwood. Briarwood beat them 34 to nothing. And you know, I've been on on the bandwagon for Winona. They've got a good football team. It almost shows you exactly uh, what Fred Yancey is able to do again this year at Briarwood Christian. Uh, uh, Definitely a a true professional coach, but he's got Briarwood and the Lions playing really good. Let's move on now to Carroll. Carroll uh, beat Hedlund 29 to nothing. Alexandria beat Boaz 42 to 14. And St. Paul's down in Mobile. They beat beat Williamson in an offensive game 9 to 6. So a whole bunch of field goes down that way, but uh, Briarwood Christian stays at number one, Fred Yancey. uh, They play at Fairfield this week, so Fairfield, uh, I watched them play this past Thursday night against uh, Woodlawn. Uh, I'd say, you know, Fred would really get on to me for this, but he's going to, if he has his team ready, it won't be a problem, I'll put it that way, against Fairfield. So that's your 5A report. Briarwood Christian stays at the top in number one. Now let's move on to 6A as Hartzell comes in at number 10. They lost to Florence, and I won't call that a shocker, but Florence uh, lost that game 35-14. to 14. Um, They lost that game to Florence 35-14. to 14. They go to Muscle Shows. So last week we were talking about Florence and Muscle Shows playing each other in a big game in the north part of the state. So Hartzell comes in, kind of spoils everybody's, uh, 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 tried to spoil everybody's uh, party, but Florence beats them 35 to 14. Daphne, they uh, beat LaFleur 22 to nothing. Spanish Fort beat Robertsdale 42 to seven. Wetumpka beat Stanhope Elmore 40 to 13. And while I'm right there, Max, let's talk about Elmore County, Otauga County, (laughs) Prattville. Prattville's not in the top ten, but it's one of our favorite teams. It really is. And, you know, and, and I'm disappointed. You know that. I talk right. about it every week. My hometown, uh, an opportunity to go back from time to time. And uh, I've got some really good friends there, as you well know, and, and that carry our show and, right. and really help to support to get our show going. But the school system itself has got some financial problems. I know that. Uh, but there are some that can be overcome. I think, again, a philosophy uh, there. And they've had good coaches come there. Bill Clark's at UAB right now. Jamie, yeah. Jamie uh, Dubose. Dubose down at uh, Central Phoenix City. They've had some outstanding coaches come through there. They've turned out a lot of great athletes. I'd like to see them try to get back how long it's going to take. Sometimes it takes longer to get back than it did to fall from grace. Well, and they're 2-2 two and two this year. And, you know, we just expect when you say the word Prattville over the last 10 years to be Absolutely. mentioning them in the top 10 so uh, you know but anyway that's just one of those teams but it's like that whole little section of Alabama here Stanhope Elmore losing to Wetumpka Wetumpka however strong well, got we smoke. know that they got <laughs> smoke down the sidelines and you know I told you on one show literally guys out fanning the coals in the parking lot smoke goes back. for 99 yards and he stirs up enough to make it okay Opelika they go to Benjamin Russell this coming week that'll be a big ball game for Caleb Ross and company but they handle Chilton County very easily 41 to 14 Ramsey they beat Hueytown 26 to 10 so they're back on their winning ways or continuing they moved to Parker so look for Ramsey to keep rolling although Parker's pretty good team this year Oxford they beat Coleman 38 to 14 they play at Albertville next week Pinson Valley and Clay Chalkville. We got to stop right there just a minute. That was a rivalry ball game. Uh, I've attended several of those games, and this week I went to Thompson, which I'll tell you about in just a minute when we get to them. But Bo Nix at, at Pinson Valley, he has got an arm, and his daddy's coaching him up real good. <laughs> but uh, uh, well, you know, I just thought about that. That might be a package deal going back to all. <laughs> I hate to make reference to that, but, you know, oh, there's right. a possibility. Uh, okay. Might as well stir the pot a little Might bit. Well. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Clay Chalkville played their hearts out. It was a great ball game, 34-32 to 32 the final. Wow. That ball game, I, I went to one uh, three or four years ago that was 52-51 to 51 or something like that. 
Clay Chalkville won it, and I called it on the radio. And I've never been so tired after calling a ball game in my life. It was just that wide open. But congratulations to Pinson Valley. They stay undefeated in 6A by beating Clay Chalkville. Blunt uh, in the second position. Uh, you know, I've got conflicting reports on this. I got a report they lost to Sarah Land, and then I got a report that they won uh, against Sarah Land. So, uh, so I got it down. I'm going to go what I got, what the official came across my desk. Sarah Land 42 to 14. And Austin in the number one yeah. position, they beat Hazel Green 63 21. They go to Columbia next week and play. So that's your 6A report for this week in high school football. And now, as you can see here, I've got double pages on 7A <laughs> because it was that kind of week. Let's start down at number 10. The game I attended on Friday night, Mountain Brook comes in at number 10. They not only lost, Max, but it's one of those games about how you lose. Uh, Mark Freeman and company at Thompson beat up on them 40 to 13. They shut down the big running back. Yes, they did. Yeah. Uh, they, they shut him down, but Tagovailoa is who yeah. I want to talk about at quarterback at Thompson. I'll get to him more in a minute. But uh, he, I got some film of him coming up in just a minute when we talk about Thompson. We get 3A. But Mountain Brook didn't perform as well as they should have. And the defense for Thompson, which I had a little bit of suspect, uh, might be suspect going into the season, is not. But Mountain Brook doesn't get any easier. They travel to Spain Park this next week. Going to be a... Uh, uh, they're actually they're at home against Spain Park, so they get to play at home. Oak Mountain they lost for the first time this year, seven to nothing. Couldn't get the offense going. They lost to Vestavia, so um, seven to zip. But the big thing there is, and we keep mentioning Thompson, they happen to be in the middle of everything. But they are at home next week against Thompson, so Thompson's got to travel over. At number eight is Auburn. Uh, they uh, beat Prattville 21 to six. They go to inter they stay at home and play Enterprise. Theodore lost to Fairhope 17 to 14. They go to Davidson next week and play. We mentioned Spain Park. They're at Mountain Brook. They lost to Hoover in one of the most exciting high school football games I believe I've ever seen. 27-24. Very similar to the Tennessee Florida game in a weird kind of way. You just didn't expect it. But Hoover and Josh Niblett and company pull it out. Big ball game, 27-24. Uh, congratulations to Hoover. McGill Tulin beat Murphy 21 to 14. They're at home against Foley. Everybody's interested on how Tad Niblett's doing at Foley. We're gonna find out this week as uh, as they play McGill Tulin. Hewitt Trustful, another team you just can't say enough about. They beat up Grisham 49 to 7. Never was a close ball game. They play at home against Buckhorn, so look for them to uh, continue to roll as well. Thompson, as we mentioned, they go to uh, Oak Mountain as they beat uh, Mountain Brook. And while we're on that uh, Thompson, we've got some highlights of that game. You can see Tagovailoa there uh, as he is very cool, very uh, under pressure, Max. He just doesn't get rattled. He stands in the pocket. When he gets flushed, he, he knows, but he's very accurate with the arm. We brought some highlights of, of him throwing the ball and, and also of scrambling out of the pocket. Just a good, good football team and a good good kid to watch in the future and tag him alone. You think he may just stay in the state of Alabama uh, for his collegiate career? Absolutely, I do. I think there's two quarterbacks that's going to stay in the state of Alabama for You've their said career. That before. He's one of them. Bo Nix is the other one. Just my prediction. They may play against each other. Who I knows? I have no idea if that's going to be <laughs> true or not. Number two, Hoover. Of course, they uh, uh, beat Spain Park, as I said, 27-24. They are at home against Tuscaloosa County this coming week. And then Central Phoenix City. I'm walking down the sidelines, Max, 10 minutes to 7 at, in Alabaster at Thompson High School. My, my text goes off, which it usually does on Friday nights. But I look at it, and it's Jamie Dubose texting me to tell me, to remind everybody that watches Game Day TV that they did not play because of the effects of, of Irma. And so that was a big blow. But they were down uh, in uh, late. Not Lake City, but uh, uh, Lake Kathleen, Hill. Kathleen, Kathleen, Florida, yes, and absolutely. couldn't play the game. So, uh, well, they so, had a good trip. That's all I can say. They did. They had a good trip. And I believe Saturday morning when I, when you and I talked, that was the first game I asked you about right. because I didn't see a score anywhere. Jamie, right. uh, you both does a good job. I'm well, if it was a, uh, a region game or something, they'd have to figure out how to make it up. Yep. But it was not. It was one of those away that's games true. out of state, just building his program bigger and bigger and bigger. But uh, let's go to the recruiting report now, Max, and, 
Everybody wants to know where everybody's going or what's happening on the recruiting trail. The guy that I got number one on the recruiting report this week is Asa Martin, the running back from Austin. He's already committed to Auburn. He rushed for 250 – get this now, Max. He rushed for 253 yards, three touchdowns. You know how many times he touched the ball? Eight. You don't do that in practice. Eight you know, carries, 253. When you've got a, you a standstill scout team. That's right. And Obviously, a, he's a prospect. And I'm on a radio show up in that part of the, the yeah. state during the week. That right there is going to be something that everybody up there is going to take notice of. Shedrick Jackson, Bo Jackson's uh, nephew, uh, plays wide receiver for Hoover. He's also committed to Auburn, and I think that's a pretty good solid commit. Uh, he caught three passes for 69 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Miles Mason, this is kind of interesting. He's defensive back, running back for Hewitt Trustful. He hasn't played this year due to injury, so he comes back in his debut game now he rushes five times for 75 yards and two touchdowns so um he is a definite five star in my book athlete miles mason remember that name at hewitt trustful along with about 10 or 15 other names at hewitt trustful we can't say enough about hewitt trustful uh, central phoenix city hoover and uh, and Thompson this year they loaded and then finally Justin Ross a wide receiver we like to report on every week from down at Central uh, Phoenix City of course he did not play game was canceled due to lingering effects of Hurricane Irma and the game was to be played in Kathleen Florida which we already reported so there's your high school report I inhale now take another breath but we like to get all the games on Max Top 10 and talk about as many schools as we can around the state. Yeah, it is, and certainly the, the popularity of high school football. You and I have talked about that when we were at a, one of the local radio stations here in Birmingham yeah. and talked about the growth. And I think uh, you made a point to me this morning that basically 10 years ago, it wasn't like this. Today, everybody wants that publicity. They do. We'll take a break now. We'll come back, wrap this show up. Kim Shearer is going to have you game day weather right here. We return here on Game Day TV. How do you show love? With the big things? The little things? The tough things? You're everything. Show them you care. Alpha Insurance. You can travel The one and only Participation in all extracurricular activities helps the development of the student athlete. While academics always come first, we consider extracurricular activities the co-curricular activity that can help develop the student athlete in their daily lives. When you're in business, you need to stay as visible as possible. Turn your car or truck into a moving billboard to reach new customers all day, every day with high impact, full color graphic vehicle wraps from Sundown Tent and Design. From design to expert installation, Sundown Tent and Design is a vital tool in your marketing arsenal to keep your business in the public eye. Visit them today at sundownwraps.com or call 205-337-3691. I never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her. And she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family.
Hey guys, can you believe it's officially fall this Friday? I can tell you it won't feel like it around Alabama. Summer is not ready to say goodbye just yet. Summertime temperatures remain all week and into the weekend. It's no fun to be sweating at the football games, and this weekend will continue that trend. Alabama and Auburn, both away games, and the temperatures really don't vary much from what we'll experience here at home. Alabama plays in Nashville, Tennessee, and the temperatures will be highs in the 80s and lows in the high 60s. A couple of showers are possible. Auburn will be in Columbia, Missouri, where the high temperature will be in the 80s, but the lows will be in the 60s. Troy State, they'll play here at home in Troy, where the highs will be 88 and a low of 65. That hot and muggy weather will be with us for Friday night high school football. The humidity... Sorry. Yeah. That hot and muggy weather will be with us for Friday night high school football. The humidity levels will be around 90%. My hair will need extra moves to tame the frizz. I can assure you of that. Take that poncho just in case because we will have a 50% chance of scattered thunderstorms. Temperatures will be in the 80s for the highs and 60s for the lows. That's it for game day TV weather. Don't forget to go by Helium Mercantile to buy a cute game day outfit. Let's get back to Max and Jerry. Kim Shearer does a great job with our game day uh, TV weather report. I want to thank Kim. It's always uh, interesting what's going to happen. Well, Max, let's talk about games coming up now this week. We've got a couple of minutes here to get in big games. We know uh, Auburn, Missouri, let's start there. Got to be a big game for Auburn's Auburn. Auburn's on the road this year, right, uh, going to Missouri. We kind of touched on that already. I got Auburn in a close one there, but it all depends on how the offense performs. I'm not worried about the defense. Uh, not worried that Missouri can run up and down the field like they have before. I like Auburn in a close ball game, but they got to put points on the board. Alabama. Alabama's going to win that one. I think they're going into Vanderbilt and up into Nashville this weekend with a, uh, to levy some criticism. Uh, I think that some of the fans had with Alabama this week. They started a little bit slow, uh, made a few mistakes along the way, but uh, they're going to roll. They roll. I like Alabama by two touchdowns at least. Georgia. Uh, here's one that I think uh, is going to have us some concern about Mississippi State with Mississippi State coming to town. As good as Mississippi State is, I don't think Georgia has prepared for that. Georgia's played well for a young bunch, got a freshman quarterback now. Uh, their defense has actually have won the ball game, not the offense. Chubb hadn't broken loose, neither has Michelle. I like the, uh, the way they played, but I, can't tell, I cannot get out of my mind how good Mississippi State I'm taking Mississippi State in a close one uh, over in Athens this week. And finally, Florida. Florida and Kentucky. Man, I'm going to tell you what, if Florida doesn't play any better than I saw them play this week and the way they got whipped by Michigan, Kentucky wins that ball game. I know a lot of folks out there won't agree, won't agree with that, uh, but Kentucky is a sound. They're not flashy, but they're sound. I like them in a close maybe three points. All right, Max. Well, the most popular segment on our show has been for years with you is, uh, hey, Max, what's for supper? Man, it always makes me hungry. And speaking of, we got a new segment coming up very soon. I want to take just a minute to tell you about our game day chef, Marty Staples. Uh, we're going to do some tips on tailgating coming up in some shows, show you some recipes, what to do with your tailgating. But right now, Max, it's supper time. What's Well, it supper? really is, and I'm not going to have to put my hard hat on for that now. Right. I, this past week, I did a big shrimp boil. You, mm. you, this is one of your favorite. Mm. I like the spicy shrimp, but as much as I love shrimp, guys, I like the corn and potatoes that go with it with the same taste. And certainly that worked out very well. I did a big old mustard potato salad. For those of you that like that or may not like the tangy, but I do. I did a lettuce wedge with homemade blue cheese dressing that went with that. Uh, garlic rolls this time. I usually do garlic French toast, but I didn't do it. I did garlic rolls with that. I washed all that down with a big old pitcher of sweet iced tea. And for dessert, mine and your favorite, I did a banana pudding, only a few vanilla wafers, a lot of pudding, and twice as many bananas. What an addition to Game Day TV. It's been a packed week, high school and college as well. We'll have another show for you next week. It'll be just as full next week as it was this week. For Max Howell, I'm Jerry Young. Thanks for watching us right here on Game Day TV.